All right, good, everybody. Welcome to Inside Golf. I'm Harry Donahue. Today, from the PGA Merchandise Show in Orlando, Florida, it's Demo Day here in Orlando. And in the weeks ahead, we'll have plenty more from the annual Merchandise Show. Today, we're going to be talking about instruction. And we have three of the best teachers from the Philadelphia section of the PGA. I'm talking about Lou Guzzi, former teacher of the year, Eric Kennedy from Overbrook, and from Makefield Highlands, Ed Gibson. Also, our teed off panel talks about the latest golf course rankings in the U.S. And we'll have the folks from Rothman Institute talk about what you can do to reduce lower back pain if it's an issue for you. So stay with us. Plenty coming up here from Orlando, Florida on Inside Golf. Inside Golf, presented by PGN Plus. Play your golf bucket list. By Jersey Man Magazine. It's a Jersey way of life. And Philly Man Magazine, bringing it to Broad Street. And by the Philadelphia Section PGA. Experts in the game and business of golf. At this moment, across the country, families are packing their bags for a getaway. And no matter where they end up, they'll all be home by dinner. Plan your own at PlayGolfAmerica.com. From finding fun and affordable programs to finding advice from PGA and LPGA professionals, PlayGolfAmerica.com has a way for you to get away. Visit today for details. PlayGolfAmerica.com, your link to the game. Golf is your passion. Each round is a unique experience with memories that last a lifetime. Make your next round one to remember with PGNplus.com, the professional golfer's network. Sign up for free for exclusive access to the best private courses in your area. Already a country club member? Go to PGNplus.com to learn how to take your membership further. Play your golf bucket list only on PGNplus.com. Book your tee time today. Welcome back to Inside Golf today from the demo day at the PJ Merchandise Show in Orlando, Florida. Well, as you can see, plenty of people here are moving around demo day trying to get maybe that club that's going to work best for them in 2015. And of course, the club's one thing, instructions another. And we have three of the best in the Philadelphia area today on Inside Golf. Eric Kennedy works with CBS 3's Kate Bilo on the driver. We go to the bunkers with Ed Gibson. And we'll finish up with a putting tip or two from Luke Guzzi. All right, so the driver. So it's the pretty. only club in the bag that we hit up on. The only club. Every oh. other, and that's why we put it on a tee. Most people hit their drivers too low, okay? Okay. So think about it like a garden hose. If I took a garden hose and needed to get to the other side of my yard, I wouldn't go straight. I would kind of start angling up. Okay. Now there's obviously a perfect angle in there to get the furthest distance. If I go too high, it's going straight up and straight down. So what we're trying to do is get that magic trajectory. Most people need to hit their driver 15, 16, 17 degrees in the air okay. to be able to get the maximum mm -hmm. distance. So to do that, because you only have an 11, you have a 13 degree driver, which is great. So a 13 degree driver, we only need to hit up on it maybe two or three degrees to get that perfect launch that we're looking for. Okay. So what I'd like to see you do is I'm gonna take the ball away and I'm gonna have you just set up like you're going to hit that tee. And we're gonna put that tee kind of opposite your left heel for right now, good. Okay. And all I want you to do is make that same full backswing and I want you to clip that top of that tee. Beautiful. So drivers, yeah, I, I if, if your technique is good, could be your favorite club in the bag. Yeah. You know? And if you come down to the driving range here, 90% of the people are working on their driver because it's the most fun. Right, it has that cling sound. It really it. does. Okay. The, the, the part of it that's, that's um, challenging is the head is this big, right? Yeah. That doesn't mean that you can use the entire face of the club because this, this club is very, it's like a fragile thing as it's floating into the ball. Okay. If you hit the center of that club, it flies straight and, and that goes for almost most okay. people. Okay. If you're at the center of your driver, if your grip is decent and you make decent contact on the center of the face, the ball flies pretty well. Okay. What most people react to is that they're not hitting it on the center of the face. They're hitting it on the toe, they're hitting it on the heel, okay. and when that happens, that club can rotate 10 degrees open and 10 degrees closed based on their impact. Wow. So when that so happens, cool. they see, 
oh, I'm slicing it today, and they try to fix it, and they can't fix it because what they're doing is mishitting it. So get used to addressing the club slightly behind the ball like you were hitting your six hybrid. And just hold that finish for me. Okay. Oof. Good. So a couple things you'd notice there is that ball went a little left on you, right? Yes. It went left. left on you almost immediately. So what that usually means is you hit this part of the club face. So when you hit this part of the club face, it does turn the face closed a little bit. And for you, you hit kind of a heel pull to the left. Okay. If that happened multiple times in a row, a bunch of times in a row, then we can adjust that by just adjusting the distance you are away from the golf ball. Okay. If, if your scatter shot, if you hit it toe, center, heel, toe, center, heel, then that probably has a lot to do with your head mo movement again. So okay. your head movement is, is something that, that stays pretty steady for you on all golf swings. It's not gonna change because you're hitting a wedge or it's not gonna change because you're hitting a driver. The ball position is gonna change, but your center is gonna stay the same. Okay. So that particular shot, if you were gonna hit that on the golf course, you have to be able to recognize where it's hitting on the face. And when most people will feel is that the club feels like it turns in their hands a little bit. If it feels like it turns a little bit, then that's a pretty good indicator that you hit it either on the heel or on the toe. Okay. okay? So again, as you swing, I want you to feel like your head is staying still and your arms are extending, extending, extending. So I'm okay. gonna move the ball slightly further away from you and we're gonna make you feel like you've gotta extend to go get it. Okay. All right, so go ahead and set up like you're gonna hit. All right, so at impact, you're gonna be about there. So I want your head to stay steady. Okay. As you get to about here, your arms are going to start to extend. Your head's going to stay behind the golf ball. We're going to launch it. Just like that. Here we are at Makefield Highlands. And you know, uh, when people say they want to go to the beach, I'm saying, I hope you're not going to be playing golf. And Ed Gibson, in case they are, is the assistant professional here at Makefield Highlands. And we're standing right here on the beach, as some people like to call it, Ed. Not the most friendly spot for a lot of people for some reason, right? Yeah, the easiest thing I think most players say to themselves is, um, you know, gosh, the best way to get out of the bunker is not to get in it. Right. Um, but obviously when we get in this situation, we have to find a way to get out. Try to so. avoid it at all costs, right? Yeah, it's a hazard. But it's really an easy shot. I mean, relatively speaking. For someone of your expertise you know, but even for for amateurs there's just a couple things that they can do to tweak their bunker play and they're going to welcome the opportunity to go in there and get it close yeah i think you know coming off the he the heels of a u.s open i mean some of the best in the world when they get closer to the green they'd almost prefer to be in the sand because they can get the ball to stop because you have the long grass around the green so but you know obviously the amateur golfer um you know it's a challenge it's a challenge just to get it up out of the out of the bunker so yeah no matter but a what. lot of it is mind over matter right and you're going to show us that. here with a little bit of a tip and yeah. the proper equipment and they've come you know leaps and bounds, leaps and bounds. in and terms of what you use in the bunker yeah there's no question i mean there's so many different bounce options and there's so many different grinds and and the explanation is that the sand the the club goes through the sand and the sand actually lifts the ball That's right, out yes. of the bunker the one, not necessarily the one shot play. in golf you're purposely trying not to hit the golf ball so i mean you know some of us that uh, have a challenge with with just making good contact this is a shot where you know what if i don't hit the ball i may have a better execution out of the bunker so um but yeah i'll touch on that real quick so yeah, I, give us a, i have my 58 degree um it's got an m grind on it so it's got a little extra bounce here couple things simply um you've those of you out there that have hit this shot, you've heard maybe um, opening the face. Uh, and opening the face just means kind of letting the face kind of do almost like a little quarter turn. That helps to engage the bounce. So that's one of the reasons why we do that in the bunker. Um, with that said, we have to open our stance to offset the direction of it. So I'm going to open them. I'm going to open my face to help the bounce kick in. And then I'm going to open my stance a little bit. Now the key is in the bunker, we really have to make sure we accelerate through the shot. We Don't never want to decel. Right. We never want to decel, um, and w if that tends to happen, if you tend to decel, you may fall and hit the ground, or in this case, the sand, way too early. Um, so if you, you know, if you're out here practicing, you put a line on either side of the golf ball, you hit some bunker shots. And where would you concentrate on making contact with the flange behind yeah, the ball? Yeah, something that I do when I play is, I mean, since we can't touch the sand with our club because it's a hazard prior to us hitting the golf ball. There's no question we're going to hover. So when I hover and I get set up in here, of course, our feet are digging in. So that's how we can tell the texture and the depth of the sand a little bit. 
you can notice here the ball positions forward, so kind of off the inside part of my left foot. And I'm going to put some weight on that hip too. I'm going to anchor my feet in the, into the sand. So when I hover this club, I'm hovering the club over the sand, and I'm kind of focusing it on the area, Harry, a little bit behind the ball where I'm trying to enter the sand. So in my case with the 58, I am still going to open it a little bit. I move my hands down on the club just for some control a little bit. I don't have that long of a bunker shot. Choke up a little bit. Then. Yeah, choke up a little bit on it. Um, so again, if I'm practicing, this is a good one at home. So I'm going to get set up. I'm going to do the quarter turn with the club. I, again, I have my 58 degree wedge. Digging my feet in. The ball's going to be kind of running off the inside part of my front foot. And I'm leaning a little bit into, my, into that same hip. I'm going to try to keep some weight on my left side. I'm going to hover the club right behind the ball. and try to finish my swing coming through. Now, when you look down at the line, the goal would be one third behind the line with the divot and two thirds in front of the line. That's about it. It almost looks like a footprint. Well, there you have it. Easy way to cure all the problems when you're in the beach or in the sand bunker, whatever you want to call it. Thank Always you. a pleasure. Appreciate it. Right in the center. There's another one. Well, actually the first one, a little longer than a parking lot, but I've adjusted to the speed of the putting mat here at Lou Guzzi's laboratory at Talamore and Ambler and Lou. How about that, huh? Just took me one stroke and so you're a quick learner. That's don't sure. don't you uh, wish it was that easy all the time. All right. We are talking about putting specifically Ricky Fowler and something that you noticed yep. that helped him become one of the best putters on tour this past season. Golf Magazine said, Lou, What's he doing? You wrote about it. Now, share it with the viewers. Yeah, you know, one of the things that I had the privilege of, of doing was doing some tips at the PGA Championship in Kentucky at Valhalla. I also had the opportunity to watch Ricky putt. His putting stroke, to me, Harry, seems to be a little shorter going back, steady. He uses a line on his golf ball, something new to get that lined up. So he's been using the line this year and he's making a lot of putts from inside 10 feet. Unbelievable. Steady head, smaller stroke, and for the article, we actually show a drill that you guys and girls can do to help you with your putting stroke. All right, well, go ahead. Let's uh, see that little drill. Well, now, you've got a special putter there, right? One I, with a laser attached to it. I do, isn't that? It's amazing. Another There's a little laser here in Lou's laboratory. Well, you have to learn how to aim your putter, putter, obviously, so, and we can actually turn the laser on, and it gives us the ability to see exactly where that putter's lined up. And right now, Harry, I want that right on the right edge of that hole. And there we have it. You got it. And then what Ricky does is he obviously takes the line that's on the golf ball and he uses that to get himself lined up and committed to the putt. Once he does that, he's over the ball, his putting stroke's solid, not a very complicated stroke whatsoever. Obviously, he's been making a lot of those short putts. Okay, tell me about position well middle of your stance forward or back yeah it's a great question so we're going to put the line down just like ricky does right and we've decided this is this is going to be an inside right putt and then ball position i believe should be just forward of middle so that we can just hit up on the ball a little bit so we get that putter set up just forward of middle now i'm using the inside down the line by momentous and what this does is it gives me the ability to work on the stroke. The putter goes slightly inside. And then from there, we're stroking the putt. It goes down the line. And Harry, the putter releases just a little bit. It doesn't stay directly at 90 degrees to this rail. It actually turns a little, a little bit. bit. Yeah, so it's inside, down the line, and then there's your stroke. So if we take the ball, like Ricky does, and we just use that line, Get set up, no head movement whatsoever, and just take it back with the smallest backswing that we can make and a good accelerated stroke. Here we go. And you can see right in the middle. Solid. Keep your head steady, visualize that putt. Don't move your head till the putter completely stops. Pretty simple. Okay, so that's uh, positioning and taking it inside a little bit, squaring up and having it release a little bit. How about grip pressure? Is there one dominant hand that you like? Oh, Ben Crenshaw, obviously we know how great a putter he was. He Is felt, that his Yeah, he felt the, the power of the stroke in his right hand. One of the things I always ask my students, can you roll the ball where you want to, and do you have speed control? If they can do those two things, 
carry. I don't care what kind of a stroke they have, how they set up to the ball, where their weight distribution is, as long as they can do those two things, they're gonna be great putters. How fitting it is that we finish up that segment with Lou Guzzi, who just a year ago was named the PGA Teacher of the Year right here in Orlando at the PGA Merchandise Show. Now, we went from the putting tip with Lou to uh, showing you here a little bit of the largest practice range in the country here at Orange County National Golf Club. It is something, it's 360 degrees. You can go from anywhere and hit the farthest drive and not hit anybody across from you. And coming up next, we'll have our teed off panel talking about the latest golf course rankings in America. There's some changes at the top and also some changes involving Philadelphia area golf clubs. That's next on Inside Golf. If you haven't seen it already, I'd like to introduce you to Jersey Man Magazine, published by former Eagle tight end Ken Dunnick. It's the only men's magazine in our area. Enjoy articles on cigars, martinis, the mob, business, politics, and, of course, golf. Written by big-time journalists like George Anastasia, Bill Lyon, Sam Carcitti, and many others. Subscriptions are only $20 a year and are available at jerseymanmagazine.com. Valley Forge Casino Resort, we're rolling out the action. So take us for a spin. For the win. Valley Forge Casino Resort, it's safe, it's chic, and only a shuffle away from the main line. Well, hi again, everybody, and welcome back to Inside Golf. It's time for our teed off panel, and our panel today is back on the floor of the casino at the beautiful. Valley Forge Casino Resort. And our panel consists today, Mike Kern from the Philadelphia Daily News. He is uh, back with us. He's appeared multiple times on Teed Off. Jack McCaffrey is back today. Jack, a writer for the Delaware County Times. Good to see you, Jack. Great to be here, Harry. And Jack Conley, no stranger to inside golf, former president, PGA of America, and always a great- Always president, PGA of America. Always president okay that's another subtitle and a great golf ambassador in philadelphia hangs his hat now at north hills country club yeah happy that's to the be logo there. right there there it is. how did i not know that uh, speaking of country clubs this is the february issue of golf digest magazine and one of the big stories is their annual ranking of a hundred greatest golf courses in america and a little bit of a shake-up now jack a little bit of the shakeup involves going from number one to number two. That goes back and forth, though, between basically Augusta and Pine Valley. And Augusta is back on top this year by millifractions, right? Yeah, 0 0.017 of the rankings. Point, yeah, uh, uh, Augusta has been number one from 2009 to 2012 and from 15 to 16. Pine Valley has been number one from 85 to 2000. Three to eight and uh, 13 and 14. So Pine Valley's got a, a couple of up on them. Yeah, and, and there have been some other notable changes. I think Jack Nicholas, for instance, had three of his courses that were ranked in the top 100 a year ago dropped out of the top 100. Now, I don't know what that means to a lot of golfers. I don't know what it means to a guy like Jack Nicholas, but obviously, Something's going on, Mike, I guess, to cause that to happen. Is, is right? John F. Burns on that list? Because I want to know if, if that. <laughs> John F. Burns, for I think, how long they've been doing this? 49 years? <laughs> it's the 49th year that John F. Burns is not uh, a John shown F. Burns, up. John F. Burns, as they list. say. I, I mean, does anybody really care other than the people at Augusta National and the people at Pine Valley? Because I guess I'm guessing the hair that they're splitting is this. And I might think, personally, Marion's the best, or somebody from Pittsburgh might think Oakmont's the best, or Pebble B, or whomever. The top six seven eight nine never changed they're pretty much the same as you go along and that's because they're the best courses so um i, I think it's a lot about nothing really now if they move somebody up from like you know eight to one and said whatever then maybe you'd have a case um but i i think there's probably more things going on in the rankings below one and two that are probably a lot more whatever well there have been two courses over the past year that have made significant jumps in the Philadelphia area I'm talking about. One is Marion East, which moved up a few spots, but Aronimic moved down, I think, from 80 a year ago to 90, Jack, this year. Now, 
I think Murray and the, the U.S. Open there back in 13 had a lot to do with that. There would be no reason to do this if there wasn't going to be fluctuation. If it was the same list every two years, why would they do it? Now, I understand it's scientific and it's uh, judged by, a, by an accounting firm and they do it, they score it accurately. But part of the, uh, the criteria is aesthetics. It's uh, beauty of the course. Who knows, maybe one of the judges goes to a course when it's raining that day or it's cloudy or it's different. It, it can affect a half a point. So they do it every two years. There's a shake up in it. It gives the other courses something to shoot for. If it was the, because see, theoretically, it's the same, Augusta, how, many, how much has it really changed? I mean, it's the same thing. I went down two and now I'm one. It's, it's you, ridiculous. The well, they tiger proofed it a little bit and yeah. that, Changes, I think. But when you take a U.S. Open to a place like Marion, where it hasn't had one in 30 some years, or whatever, it was, and people see it and how well it held up, I think that obviously had something to do. The same thing with um, Pinehurst, I guess. Made I a was big just going to say that because the whole now that course completely got changed. They went back to what it used to look like, and then you have a U.S. Open there, and everybody sees it and goes, "Okay." Um, but yeah, uh, it's it's like Jack said, if it was going to stay the same. That's kind of what they, they might do that on purpose. Just say, hey, we're going to move a few of these it's a different, it's a, different pa it's a different panel of judges every time, too. And, and we don't know. fluctuates. I don't know who they are. Taste. I don't know how many, you know, get to play. Jack, you and I were talking a little bit about this before we went on about, you know, guys may want to play Pine Valley just to play Pine well, Valley. They, right? they get on the course Raiders just so that they can play some of these great golf <laughs> courses. And, uh, you know, it's like Jack was saying, if I have a better round of Pine Valley than Augusta, I'm going to think more of Pine Valley than I do Augusta. And uh, Augusta, you, you could play that two years from now, and it may not be the same course as it is today, because depending upon who shoots what the next two years, they're gonna make some changes to it. So uh, it's just chocolate and vanilla. Talking about significant changes one year to the next, Pinehurst number two you mentioned, after the US Open and uh, the Crenshaw core changes down there, went from number 40 to number 12, probably the biggest jump in the top 100. And a lot of it had to do with returning it to the originals down there and lack of irrigation. It's a lot browner than it was probably last year and yet it moved up from 40 to 12, Jack. Well, I think that part of that helped with both the men's and the women's open two weeks in a row. So they get two weeks of uh, recognition about how good the golf course was. It played down and brown, which a lot you see in the uh, British opens. And uh, it's a heck of a golf course. I mean, there's no doubt about it. They protect par by, you know, crowning the greens and uh, you know what was it uh, Keimer didn't hit a, a chip all, all week he putted all week. And yet there are people who will tell you that Pinehurst is the most overrated course they've ever played or they don't like that particular style. Way. So, I mean, and I've always tried when I go to a golf course not to let how I play affect how I think about the course because you can go to Oakmont and shoot 110 that doesn't mean Oakmont's not a great golf course it just means that it kicked your butt that day so I, I think I would hope the Raiders would keep that part out of it. I'd like to add last check. Now, if, if your rating changes, if you go from, what did you say, 40 to 12 or something like that, would that affect your bottom line at, at a club? Uh, I think it may. Let's put it this way, Jack. It changes their marketing years. approach. I'll yeah. tell you that. Absolutely. And we're going to wrap it up on that note. Our thanks to Mike Kern, Jack McCaffrey, and Jack Conley for joining us here at the Valley Forge Casino Resort for our latest edition of Teed Off. The Valley Forge Casino Resort is the region's only full amenity gaming resort, and it's only second from the Pennsylvania Turnpike at King of Prussia. It features 600 slots, 50 table games, and there are nearly 500 guest rooms, plus eight restaurants designed to meet all of your dining needs. So put the beautiful Valley Forge Casino Resort on your destination list. Golf is your passion. Each round is a unique experience with memories that last a lifetime. Make your next round one to remember with PGNplus.com, the professional golfer's network. Sign up for free for exclusive access to the best private courses in your area. Already a country club member? Go to PGNplus.com to learn how to take your membership further. Play your golf bucket list only on PGNplus.com. Book your tee time today. Now for our Fit Tip of the Week, presented by Philadelphia PGA partner, Rothman Institute, the region's largest orthopedic provider. As the cold weather moves in, the Philadelphia PGA and Rothman Institute would like to provide tips and tricks for you to stay healthy, fit, and golf ready this winter. Here to help us deliver these tips each week, PGA professional Scott Riley and sports medicine surgeon, Dr. Paul Marchetto from Rothman Institute. 
All right, thanks, Leela. We're back here with another Fit Tip. I'm here with Doc Marchetto. We're going to talk a little bit about actually uh, someone that came into the golf shop, a person that loves to play golf, is out there all the time. But in fact, old man winter set in, and, uh, and sure enough, uh, this person came in a little bit of back pain and feels like they can't play golf. I mean, there's really a pain from the lower back going down the leg. Um, I'll maybe let you talk about a little bit of, of maybe some of the causes of, of what happened. And uh, I will inkle to you that this gentleman was shoveling the driveway. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that's a perfect setup. So uh, someone who's not used to doing that kind of heavy lifting, when they're in that position, repetitively lifting heavy, wet snow, the next day they're going to come to you and they're going to say, gee, I, you know, I'm having trouble with uh, my low back. I have pain when I sit. I sit in the car for two hours on my commute and uh, my leg goes numb. I have pain down below my knee into my foot, all radiating pain from the low back. Uh, disc disease is what we've described. Uh, the nerves in the low back go down into the buttocks and down below, behind the knee, down into the uh, calf area, mm -hmm. into the foot. You know very well that that's coming from the low back region. Mm -hmm. Typically, these subtle pains can be resolved with what we've described before, anti-inflammatory medication, uh, moist heat, posturing when you sleep at night with a pillow between your legs or pillow under your knees and sleeping on your back, not on your stomach, to take that arc off of the low back. Um, and then as you start to progress, flexibility exercises and really again getting back to that core strength to help protect that little spine with all those big core muscles. Very important to go through all those. And we see it during sports, overdoing it, carrying too much, uh, swinging too hard, I mean, just twist. And if you have a little susceptibility with an irritated nerve in your low back, yeah. it's gonna trigger that and boy, it'll ruin your day. Yeah, you know those activities, everybody wants to help around the house, but uh, sometimes think about uh, some of those precautions. Yeah, yeah, that's why s shoveling snow is uh, something you should be careful with. <laughs> Well, you heard it here from Doc. Hopefully we won't get too much snow this winter. We'll be out there playing more, and we appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. At this moment, across the country, families are packing their bags for a getaway. And no matter where they end up, they'll all be home by dinner. Plan your own at PlayGolfAmerica.com. From finding fun and affordable programs to finding advice from PGA and LPGA professionals, PlayGolfAmerica.com has a way for you to get away. Visit today for details. PlayGolfAmerica.com, your link to the game. Well, that's going to do it for this week's edition of Inside Golf. Today, from Demo Day at the annual PGA Merchandise Show in Orlando. And in the weeks ahead, plenty more from this year's Merchandise Show. I'm Harry Donahue. Remember, no matter how bad it's going for you out there, don't pick up. We'll see you next time from the PGA Merchandise Show in Orlando, right here on Inside Golf. Inside Golf, presented by PGN Plus. Play your golf bucket list. By Jersey Man Magazine, it's a Jersey way of life, and Philly Man Magazine, bringing it to Broad Street. And by the Philadelphia Section PGA, experts in the game and business of golf.